Arc Tutorials. This is testing concept series and today it's episode 4 where we are learning about black box testing. Often as you progress in your career as a lead, as a QA coordinator or a team lead or architect, you will get, you are bound to hear these terminologies in testing and I want to make sure that all of the Arc Tutorials community is well versed with all the testing concepts as well. That's where I started this series. I hope you'll definitely gain good amount of knowledge about the testing concepts that I'm covering in this series. In today's episode, I'm covering topic called black box testing. What is black box testing and what are the advantages? What are the disadvantages? We'll learn everything in today's episode. Let's get started. All right, so this is a testing concept series. Uh, this is episode number four, where we are learning about black box testing. If you have missed out the previous episodes, make sure you check them out so that you have entire continuity in your learning. All right, so let's talk about black box testing. What is black box testing? Black box testing is a method of software testing that focuses on the functionality of an application or system without considering its internal structure or working. In other words, the tester is only concerned about what the application does and not how it does it. What it means essentially is that when you test a particular software or an application, you are just checking whether it is working or not. How it is done, what it is doing in the background, what APIs, what services, we don't care. All we are checking here is the functionality of the application, whether it's working as expected or not, yes or no. That's what black box testing basically. So black box testing is also known as functional testing. Now, because it focuses on the application's ability to perform its intended functions. Now let's talk about some of the advantages that black box testing has. Now, the first and foremost uh, reason uh, or advantage I would say is that it can be performed by anyone, regardless of their technical knowledge or expertise. Your product owner can do it, QA can do it, um, UAT people can do it, or any any person basically who is who doesn't know about technical knowledge of your uh, process or application can still be able to go ahead, log in, and do all the things and check whether the application is working or not. Because the pure, the pure focus is only on the functionality of the application. Now it allows for a greater focus on the user experience. As I said, when black box testers are focusing only on the application's functionality, they'll try to look at it from user's perspective. What it means is that whether is it user friendly? Am I able to get the data faster? Am I able to see it? Am I able to read it? Is the color combination, the color palettes is readable? The layout is correct? The data is presented well? So all of that adds up to a greater user experience. It can be performed early in the development process because black box testing does not require any knowledge of the internal working of the system. It can start immediately from sprint one, right? Really, so when you say functional testing, as a build is done, once a sprint is completed, you can immediately start testing those user stories which are available. And really it can be done in any environment without any knowledge of the technical skills. So which means you try to identify the defects, you try to find the uh, negatives or um, missing pieces or I would say defects early on in the in the process and save a lot of time in the long run. It can be automated right and now that's another beautiful thing that when we talk about black box testing or functional testing of the application all we are checking is when I get when an input is given a I'm expecting output x right it's as simple as that. So you can really automate a lot of these stuff and do manu instead of manual comparison, you can write automated test, which should which can check that. So functionality can be automated and can save a lot of time and running the same uh, routine mundane works again and again. Now let's talk about some of the disadvantages of black box testing. Now it cannot identify internal issues. Let's a lot of times uh, in my career as a lead, I have seen that it does what it is supposed to do the application, but it's slow, right? It's taking too much time, etc. So those things uh, add up into a bad experience. And th those are mostly because of the quality of code. It's mostly because of the how the architecture of the application is designed, how the interfaces are talking to each other, etc. So 
functional testing cannot really identify a lot of internal issues which in turn becomes a pain when you have performance issue, loading issue, uh, security issues, etc. Black box testing is often time consuming and resource intensive uh, because somebody has to do it, uh, check all the functionality every single time um, when a load comes. That's where automation really helps but manual testing, manual black box testing is really time consuming because the QA community and QA team will put a lot of effort in every time um, checking all the functionality even if there is a small change and that is something that consumes a lot of time and energy from our QA team. It may not provide adequate coverage. Now since a lot of if you're talking about the entire functionality of the application chances are that there would be some piece of functionality that got missed out uh, in terms of testing thoroughly or all the possible permutation combinations of scenarios. So it may not really provide adequate coverage. That's one of the disadvantages. And it is not always effective. Just by saying that I'll do functional testing never really helps. And that's why in most enterprises, if you see uh, developers are enforced with a 99% or 98% of unit test coverage um, and that's because unit testing will also do a lot of uh, defect catching um, internally before anything comes up or shows up in th at the functional level. So yeah, so talking about disadvantages, black box testing is not always effective, um, especially it may not be able to uh, see the thing basically you have to understand is that when a person says yes or no, it gets really difficult and especially when there are so many permutation combinations of application scenarios. And when we talk about a banking application, insurance or say media or education based platforms or products, they get really, really tricky, even tax compliance and all of that are really tricky. So that's not always effective in terms of functional only manual function alone. So that, those are some of the disadvantages you should talk about um, when we talk about black box testing. All right, so that's all about black box testing that you should be knowing. In the next episode, I'll cover about white box testing concept. Uh, we'll talk about its advantages, disadvantages, etc. So I hope you're learning uh, and enjoying this series um, because this through this we can learn a lot of new concepts, uh, cover some of the fundamental grounds that are common for both developers as well as QA. Thank you so much for joining. If you like my work and tutorials, please do consider buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash arttutorials. Thank you so much. See you in the next episode.